Welcome back. Let's get this thing moving. So what I've got here for you today is just to point out that back in July, we were using this collab. August, last time I updated was August. It's still been working. I've been training things every day. I use it daily. Um, the point is I've put a new version out for everybody just here, February 15th, 2024. Um, and this is just a fork of Linacraft's Koya. Laura trainer. So what I'm going to do is just quickly run through it. This one is preset for an A100. So if you have Colab Pro, you can just do the minimum. So I'm going to show you the minimum you need to do first, and then we'll go back and explain what's going on quickly. So here we go. First, prepare your environment. So we check that we're actually getting our A100 GPU. We then install Koya trainer. Just click on the button every time for each section in sequence. Once that's installed, you will put in your hugging face token. You can click here to go and get it. It's just the read token. Put it in there. That will download the models. So obviously put the stuff in, then click play. Directory config. Again, this is for my drive. It's set up so you've got all of your folders on Google Drive already with your captions already set up. Okay. So existing data set, you just put the path in, right? Uh, if you don't know what the path is, when it's running, you can open this, navigate to the folder, right click and copy the path and put it there. And that saves you there. In for bucketing and latents, I have recursive on because I use subfolders. So you can have multiple data sets in one LoRa. You just need to put all your data sets into a single path on Google Drive and then point it all here and use this recursive. All right. It's set up for 1024 because that's SDXL. It should automatically rescale all your images. Obviously, that would be down, not up, to have the best results. So, you know, bigger images are okay. And it will just automatically put them into aspect ratio buckets for you um, and set up all the metadata, can put all of the tags, that's the text files that are paired. So when we talk about the data set, it would be an image with a text file. Same file name. And then the text file describes what's the image. And you just have many pairs. That's all. They just need to match. We can do a whole video on captioning and data set curation. So I'm not going to get into that right now. I use LoRa C3 Leah with 16881. All right. Which is literally the default, which is listed there. There's no secrets there. No special source. Um, I've scaled the learning rate because I'm using 30 batch. So it'll process, it'll learn 30 images for every step. So we've increased the uh, learning rate. And that means we only need to do two epochs. Okay, so it's a very quick training method. If you don't have a lot of images, this is very, very fast. Constant with warm up. You don't need to change anything here. Nothing here needs to change. So let's click play and move on every time. Just confirm the settings, click play and move on. This is my multi multi res noise. I think it's just basically the default. To be fair, multi res six and port nine point three. I use SNR gamma of three. I found that was good. Don't forget to put your project name in, otherwise you'll get a Laura called enter project name here. Uh, everything here can stay the same. Now, if you are going to change the batch size, say you want to do a batch size of three. Maybe you want to do repeats of three. That would be 10 times less. So what I would do is I would put the epochs up to from two to 20 or 10, and then maybe not necessarily totally half the learning rate. So you have to scale it. I've left an inch, I've left a, a point in the uh, article. Basically, you have to scale the learning rate with the batch rate, and then that determines how many epochs you need. All right, to finish, to make sure that you've actually trained the images. But again, we could do a whole video on that. So if you don't know what that is, okay, leave it alone. If you do know what it is, put your uh, formula in because everyone has their own, everyone has their own approach and you, you just change the settings to how you want to use it. All right. Anyway, I don't use the sample prompt because I find that training these can take like less than two minutes. So at that point, I'll just get the LoRa and test it. It's fine. Um, it will produce two LoRa's. 
So you obviously click play. And then as we come down, it's going to confirm all of the settings. All right. And it's going to make one halfway at Epoch 1. It's going to make another one at Epoch 2. You'll know which one's which because Epoch 1 says 00000001 and Epoch 2 just has the name of the project. I find that the second one is, generally speaking, the better one, but I found it useful to keep the partially trained one because sometimes they're a bit more elastic. They're not quite as good, but they're a bit more elastic, so you can you can have some fun with... Depends on what you're training, really. For a person, it's useless, but for a style, now you can blend things in different ways. Anyway, final step, start training. And that's it. It's going to go away and do all the stuff. All right, you would have had an error further above if something had gone wrong, or it'll give you an error here if you've done something wrong. But like I said, you only need to click the start buttons in sequence. You need to put your hugging face key in. Then you need to put your data set path in. And then you need to name the project. And if you're, if you're using an uh, A100, that's all you've got to do. You could just play, 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 play. As long as, see, I would put the stuff in first and then play all, and that'll be fine. So this is a nice way for you to train your LORAs. Uh, once you're done, because you signed into Google Drive, you'll find the LORAs in Content, My Drive, Koya Trainer. And here you can see what I was talking about with the half, the half, you know, Epoch 1, and then the final Epoch 2. Usually it's finished by Epoch 2. It really depends. Like, my settings work for what I am training, and they're quite versatile, but they do sometimes need some tweaks, and it's always learning rate and epochs. Uh, you've got to do some experimentation if you don't really know what you're doing. But if you just want to mess with this, you can train things without changing anything. It's only when you start changing the settings that you run into trouble. And uh, usually the reason people have to change the settings is because they're not using a big GPU. They're using a little GPU, and so then you have to kind of back it off and make it take longer to train the same information. All right. So that's pretty much all I had to tell you. Um, like I said, big thanks to Linacraft, Koya, and the Stability team for letting us play with all this stuff. And uh, you will find the new trainer here. All right. Tested working as of today. So that's as bad as good as it gets. All right. See you next time.